Hey there. Um, hopefully everybody, uh, our technology here is working, can hear and see us uh, for our Road Rally uh, Novice webinar here. Um, my name is Peter Bollenbecker. I'm the Regional Executive for SCCA San Diego. I'll be doing some of the presenting tonight. Um, and then we also have uh, with us, uh, we'll probably take over uh, somewhere we get around to the fun of time allowances, uh, Tracy Kretsch. Um, who's been involved on our uh, Road Valley Committee, and she is also uh, one of our course designers, and uh, we're, we're trying to take a little load off of uh, Rick Sr., if any of you have been uh, in the prior presentations. So I uh, think we probably got a fair amount of people coming on. Um, we'll start with some introduction, introductory stuff, what we're going to go over. Um, there's a couple more people probably join. So uh, this is what we'll kind of go through uh, today. Obviously, we sort of started one. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about safety. Um, safety is always a uh, key part of our events. Um, a little before and day of the event, what to expect. Um, as you know, we come up, there's some uh, procedural things and then uh, just some, you know, how the, to get started, um, particularly for those of you who have not uh, been here before. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what you will see on uh, route instructions. So no one has seen those yet. Um, that is part of the Fun of this um, is not uh, getting that in advance and part of the challenge is figuring it out, um, although you'll see it's uh, relatively easy to follow, um, just not necessarily uh, easy to execute the first time on uh, checkpoint timing. So um, now I'll probably turn over to, to Tracy. Um, she'll talk to you about the app that we'll be using, which is called Richa. Um, you've probably seen some examples of that. And in particular for that, she'll talk about some uh, time allowances, which is a way that uh, if you're a little off timing, you can actually uh, take a little bit of a handicap for it, if you will, um, and get your score closer to uh, an actual on-time arrival. Um, so that'll really address the scoring part. And then, you know, we'll open it to questions. Um, as we go through the pitch, uh, we'll also, you know, the chat is open. Um, so Eric will be monitoring uh, the chat for us. Um, so I'll break it up here and there, uh, make sure we get questions answered as we go along. So if you do have questions, please feel free to pass those into the chat session um, and we'll answer them as we go along. So uh, with that, I'm going to go to the next slide, Tracy. So really, um, for those of you that are new, what is Road Rally? Um, you can read the, the top of this here. You know, it's really a, a day to be able to go out and have some fun um, with your co-driver of choice, be that uh, significant other, friend, uh, family, um, whomever you're bringing. Um, it is, you know, we will be on backcountry roads. I think you'll find the the drive enjoyable, um, but then there will be the the challenge part. And I think as we've started this up, that's what we found has been probably uh, part of that last quote, the most intense thing I've ever done. Um, it is, it, it's definitely more than, than you expected. You will be busy um, and you will be entertained as you go along. So um, what we're doing is called a time speed distance rally um, in a Monte Carlo format. None of that is particularly important uh, to remember, but as you may continue with this and go on, you'll, you'll see that referenced in this type of rally. So um, you will get a set, full set of route instructions. Um, and basically on those route instructions that we'll go over later, what you will see is there's a, a distance given between each point. Um, so you'll go point to point, um, and then there will be a time given um, that you are supposed to arrive at the next destination. So, you know, if you are supposed to arrive a mile away in two minutes, you know, that's about a 30 mile an hour average. You'll probably be on roads that are going to be no more, you know, that will be more, more than 30 miles an hour um, since we keep the speed limits. And your goal is to arrive at that checkpoint at the precise time. Um, when we get to scoring, and we'll kind of go back over this, kind of the red school theory. Go over it, go over it again, go over it again. Um, the way you score is the sum of your over and under time to arrival at all the checkpoints. Um, so they don't net. So if you're early and late, you don't get to offset one against the other. It's more of an absolute sum. So however many seconds you are off um, adds to your score. And at the end, the uh, lowest time wins. Um, and we're gonna go over tonight, something we haven't done um, as much in some of the rallies. So I don't know if we have a few people that have probably done the ones before. Um, we're learning this as we go along because it's new to us as well. Uh, but we'll talk about time allowances and how in the uh, Rich app, you will see how those work. Um, and really, if you're going to be late to a checkpoint, you can basically handicap your time and add the amount of time you're going to be late within limits um, and be able to essentially arrive on time, if you will. And really, the purpose of that is to make sure that, uh, you know, we don't do things 
um, or encourage things such as uh, speeding when we fall behind or if there's fr frankly traffic, uh, we are on public roads. If there is a, uh, you're the one that happens to hit all the red lights, um, that's another good reason to use it. So, so we'll go over that. Uh, at this point, any questions we have out there, Eric? Uh, no, not yet. I did just want to make sure that we point out that the that if you are joining late, we are going to send this back as a playback a little later. So um, don't worry. Don't don't rewind. If you want to stay up and current, please make sure you're watching the live version of this. And again, we'll be re resending out a link with the playback a little later today. Yeah. OK, well, with that, let's go on to the next. So road rally safety. Um, so uh, as you've all been going through registration and are aware, um, both a navigator and driver are required. So really um, the driver's job is to, to keep on the road, to, to monitor traffic, uh, to monitor speed. Um, as you kind of come up with your plan to arrive at checkpoints, they're really the ones executing what the navigator um, will be guiding them to. So the navigator really will be the one with the route instructions. Um, they will be the one, you know, uh, keeping track. Uh, they will be the one also if, to the extent uh, that you are interfacing and want to see what your scores are. You'll see as you go past each checkpoint with the app, you will get your score by checkpoint. Um, and then that person would also be the one that would do any adjusting uh, on the app for time allowances. So, um, you know, that is why we do require two people. Um, really, you know, driver's job is to keep safe, navigator is to, to keep them safe on where they are going. Um, Everything is at road legal speeds. Um, so as you go through the speeds that, you know, essentially you will be required to achieve in between checkpoints will be at or below uh, posted speed limits. Um, so this is, you know, a competition, not a race. Um, one of the things that, that does come up um, and, you know, at times there are uh, provisions for this, but uh, for those of you who have been here before, you know, one objective might be, well, if I get, to every checkpoint early, I could sort of stop, wait, slow down in the middle of the road, pass the checkpoint at the exact time, um, which is not the objective of this. Um, so that uh, sort of early arrival or creeping um, is discouraged. And there, uh, particularly on this course, may not be safe places uh, for you to do that. So there may not be a shoulder, there may not be a pullover, uh, which is why we're also going to spend some extra time on time allowances, because that really will be your method to make any corrections uh, for an uh, off-time arrival. Um, would be remiss, um, hopefully we don't have to keep doing this forever, um, to go over COVID safety protocols. We won't go over all of them, um, but there is a link here. Um, it's provided so you can see it here. You can follow it, go to the replay, but essentially it is on our uh, SDR SCCA website. Um, really, we've done all this online. When you arrive, it will all be distance. We don't have a group event at the end, unfortunately. Um, we do hope to get back to that, but uh, you know, all we ask is you know, respect uh, each other, keep each other safe. Um, please wear a mask when you're arriving, um, when you're interfacing with starter um, and releasing you out on course and you know, keeping distance, et cetera, in the paddock. And that's also why we ask you to uh, arrive 10 minutes before your start so we don't have everyone there. Uh, at the same time. So a few administration items before the event. Um, so as you've gone through registration, you've noticed we wanted you to register the navigator first and then the driver. I think we now have 67, 71 navigators and 67 drivers. So we're still waiting on a few drivers. Um, that's really to make sure that people understand that they do need a navigator. Um, both you and driver and navigator will have to complete the speed waiver, which is part of the registration. Um, we'll know you've done it. So there's nothing to present for a waiver or anything when you get to the event, it, it will have it all in advance. Um, once you complete that and you've got your waivers uh, taken and you're registered for both of you, you're going to get an email with your car number. Um, that will be important when we get to the route instructions. So the next thing um, you will do is download, if you have not, the Rich to Competitor application, either in the uh, Apple Store or the Google Play Store. Um, either one will work. Um, it is a free app, so go ahead, download that, open it on your phone. You'll only need it for one participant in the car. You don't want to be running two. Um, that will not work. It will only be one per car, and the navigator should have that. Um, once you've, we know you've done that, um, could, because we can see that on the other side of the app that you've now registered in, um, shortly before the event, you're going to get an email with the, not rote, but route instructions. That's my typo, um, although they are fairly rote. Um, and you'll get an invite to the driver's meeting 
next Friday, which will be immediately before the event. We'll go over last minute items um, and any last minute questions. So um, because this is all, you know, essentially touchless, uh, we do require you to print the route instructions and bring them with you. Um, we will not have them available and handing them out day of event. Um, next step will be then to attend driver's meeting. And we have had this happen before so far. Um, do not pre-run the course. Um, we're not sending it out as far in advance this time. Um, but what happens is if you run it and you're registered in the app, it will essentially assume you have already run it and it will not run on uh, rally day. Uh, or without some rework and sending you to the back of the line, et cetera. So um, with that, any questions, Eric? No, nope, no questions. The only question was, you know, I think some people are curious when they're going to be getting the route instructions. Um, you know, I'm not actually in charge of that piece, but I would assume it would only be a, a day or two before the event, perhaps uh, with the email to the driver's meeting, um, which will be next Friday. Perfect. Or we read it the night of the, the that Friday night because that is part of it is to to be able to you know go and execute. Right. All right. Uh, day of the event. So um, a few things just to take note before leaving the house. Um, you do want to make sure your phone is fully charged. You know we will be out on the, the route for you know call it two hours. Um, you want to make sure you have the competitor app installed before that. Um, bring a charging cable just in case. Um, We've run these and, you know, I've done them, uh, never had a problem with just battery life, but uh, depending on your phone, et cetera, it's probably just a wise idea to have uh, a charging cable and a brick with you or, or plugged in hardwired uh, to the car. Um, bring your rally instructions, clipboard's helpful, so you can, you know, write on it, cross things off as you go by, et cetera. Um, full tank of gas, or if you're running on electrons, a, a full fresh charge. Um, route will be a forget the exact mileage, but uh, generally they're between 50 and 75 miles. Um, and things you don't always think of, uh, in case, you know, the navigator will be reading in the car if you do tend to get motion sickness, um, maybe motion sickness pills. Um, and of course, safety stop for everybody uh, before the event. There will be rest there, there will be breaks um, that we call restarts in the course. Part of that is just so you're, you know, uh, kind of get a reset and then also obviously for uh, bio breaks and uh, any other uh, rest just to get out and stretch your legs. So when you arrive at the event start, what we ask is uh, you get there about 10 minutes before your assigned time. Um, I'd make sure you're there by 10 minutes, but there's no need to be there half an hour early, um, frankly. So um, you'll you'll be able to find us. We're going to be in the Wal a Walmart parking lot. I will tell you that. Um, and we'll be at the far back of that parking lot. Um, so that will be the general area and it won't be uh, too hard to find us. And I'll probably be running around with a bullhorn. Um, so that makes it even easier, um, much to everyone's chagrin. Um, so when you get there, make sure you have the competitor app open. Um, we'll talk a little more about this, but you'll see two things in it. There should be a GPS accuracy that'll start reading down to, you know, two meters, three meters. Um, it, it doesn't matter which, you know, as long as it's a relatively low reading two, three, five meters, it will work just fine. Um, and then when you get to the event, we'll explain it. One of the checkpoints will trigger. It doesn't actually count for the course. It's just to make sure that before we set the car out that everything's working. So if you see that checkpoint triggered and you see the GPS working, you are good to go. Um, and we'll send you out on the course. Any questions, Eric? Nope, no questions. Good to go. All right. Uh, moving on. So a couple things. Um, occasionally problems do happen. We have been uh, relatively, knock on wood, uh, problem free. Um, but a couple things uh, may happen um, if the phone does not register the GPS uh, or the test checkpoint. Um, basically, since we're in the parking lot, you can kind of loop back around to see the start, ask for some help. Um, we will uh, work with you, work with the phone to see uh, if anything is going on. Uh, one of the things, just make sure the phone you know, has a clear view since it is op obviously operating off satellite. Um, helps with GPS accuracy versus, you know, throwing it in a glove box or uh, keeping it in your lap otherwise. Um, so if you've got a, a phone holder to put on your windshield, it uh, will work much better. Um, if you get lost and cannot find your way back on course, um, and we've had this happen once or twice, um, we what we ask you is to email, believe it or not, your car uh, number, your name, and your cell phone uh, to our uh, route extraordinaire, Rick Senior at gmail.com. Um, your phone will and should ring shortly thereafter and assume it's Rick calling you. Um, uh, there, there's another app that we run that's the rally master part. We can actually see where all the cars are um, during the rally so we can help get you uh, routed back on if that becomes an issue. Um, and we, we promise we'll get to time allowances. 
um, but say that costs you, you know, 10 minutes um, detour, you can actually go ahead and account for that, um, believe it or not, within limits and end up right back on time. So don't panic if you get okay. off course. Um, other things that have happened sometimes during the event, um, the phone suddenly seems to not show or record the checkpoint times as you go by them. Um, I don't think we've had to, it actually stop. Um, what we've really had is uh, the app view got changed um, and it's actually still running and recording. Somebody just sort of swiped it over or uh, changed it to a different screen. So uh, I think we've had that happen once or twice, um, but usually everything is still running in the background anyways. Um, and worse comes to worse, if it does happen, the navigator can manually record the checkpoint times as a backup. Um, but like I said, we haven't actually had that one happen yet. Um, but the, probably the most important thing on here, have questions, Rick Senior, Gmail. Um, and he will call you back day of event. Any questions, Eric? Nope, still radio silent. All right. Okay, um, route instructions. So prior to the event, shortly prior to the event, um, and I'm not sure what the exact timing on that will be, but it uh, will, will not be too far in advance. You will get a set of route instructions that will look like this, uh, just to kind of clear what's on here. On the left is NRI, which sounds you know, very formal. Um, that's just numbered route instructions. So each step along the way. Um, the mileage is where you will reach uh, that destination. So um, the key time, if it is a uh, checkpoint or other reason, um, we will have a time on there as to what time you are supposed to arrive at that checkpoint. Um, the route instruction tells you what to do when you get there, um, obviously, and then if it is a checkpoint that is scored, uh, that is the last column you see on the right, which is checkpoint number. So you will have some directions that are checkpoints and count for score, um, and some that don't count for score, um, because obviously not everything uh, along the way is a uh, timed checkpoint. So looking here, um, it's kind of mid, mid route um, at instruction number 15. So you'll arrive at uh, a stop sign at 7.33 miles, and at that stop sign, um, you will turn right. This one had a little bit of a visual coming into it. Um, so what we did is we took a picture, um, showed that stop sign um, that's kind of in the center of the road, and it was a little bit of a funky intersection, so we made it uh, clearer. So you know at 7.33 miles, your next instruction is to turn right at that stop sign. Um, you see the next route instruction is actually very short thereafter. It's only 0 0.07 miles away. Um, so it was an immediate left onto Pico Avenue North. Um, when you see the names uh, written for the streets, it's, it should be the way it is exactly written on the uh, street signs. Um, so it wouldn't say, you know, North, that's why it has an N. If it said North, we would write North. Um, so after making that left, uh, you would know that you have a little over a mile, about 1.2 miles until uh, you are going to stay left on Deleuze Road. So what that generally means is, um, you know, there is a, a slight fork or other in the road. Um, from a route instruction, generally the, the path that is the straightest, the most common sense is generally the way they are going to go. Um, but obviously read, you know, through the route instructions. The next one here is what we call a restart. So this may have been the first leg of this route. So generally each of the routes are going to have three or four legs with a rest stop in between them. Um, and when you do that, basically it's a start over point. Um, so you, you should have time to rest. So you should have arrived uh, here at about 949 by the instructions. Um, it says right into Santa Margarita County Preserve. So there was a little park area there. Um, you could have a rest stop, a uh, bathroom break. And then what it will tell you is when you should restart actually. Um, not Sorry, apologize, that was not the arrival time. This is when you will restart from that point. So you'll get there, you probably arrive, you know, it says you probably have 15 minutes. So you probably would have arrived around 9.30, 9.35 here. Um, and you would leave at 9.49. And the important part here, and what you see on the mileage now, is the instruction to restart your, uh, zero your odometer. So reset your trip meter, because the next instruction is at 2.18 miles. So if you didn't reset it, you'd now be trying to figure out what 8.58 plus 2.18 is and keep doing that until you get to the next restart. Um, so that's the important part. And, uh, what you'll see is that at mile 19, it is a time checkpoint. So you are to arrive uh, at that 
destination, which is a mile marker 3.5. So on the side of the road, you should find mile marker 3.5, 2.18 miles down the road from where you started. Um, that is when you will hear the Rich to app go off, uh, record that checkpoint, um, and you will get a score of plus or minus uh, seconds on that. Any questions, Eric? Nope, Rick's handling them um, in line. Thank you, though. All righty. Um, so I think after this, are we on to time allowances? Richter. Richter. Okay. Do you want to do you want to take it from here? You want me? I I'll go through this one. Sure. Um, so this is kind of remember we talked at the the beginning about making sure uh, the app is running and working. Um, so when you arrive, this is uh, the screen on the right is actually just a screenshot off of the uh, app itself from the phone. So uh, number one, if you're registered in, check that the rally clock is running. That rally clock is literally a clock. Um, it, it does not have anything to do with your timing or anything else. It is a time of day clock. Um, the GPS accuracy, you see that in the blue. So as long as it is registering um, and registering within reason, if somehow you get some kind of thing that says 100 meters or something, then yeah, we should probably look at it, but never seen that happen. Um, and then you will see uh, when we start the first checkpoint. So while on the right there it does show that you this car had passed eight checkpoints, um, the first one that you see there says one restart is what you will see uh, at the event at the start. If you see that and you have the GPS accuracy, you will be good to go. Um, you can kind of see uh, in the screen there how the scoring works, you know, whether you arrive early, whether you arrive late, um, and your score is off to the right. So you'll kind of get a running score, which you then see up in the top right at that 130. Um, for those of you that have, have done this before or curious how it works. So you will start seeing those checkpoints come in as you go along uh, the course. And it does make an audible sound um, when you go by a checkpoint. So one of the things we have noticed is those with iPhones, remember to flip that switch on the left side um, to make sure it isn't on silent mode. Um, and you should hear that ping, turn your volume up. You'll obviously be in the car, et cetera. Um, so you want to hear those beeps when you go by validating you've, you've been through that checkpoint. All right. Thanks, Peter. Hi, yep. everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Tracy Critch. I'm also new to Road Rally. The event coming up will be my third time. Um, and I've been a driver and a navigator. I'm going to be back as a driver this time, which is awesome. So we're gonna chat about time allowances. And I wanna caution everyone, just don't panic about time allowances. They seem kind of complex. We're gonna walk through them. If this is really gonna be your first time on the road rally, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you and driver and navigator together, just going through the course and having a great time doing it. But we do wanna walk you through the time allowances because as you're looking at the Richter app, and again, we're using kind of our same example here from um, our It's a Pie Run uh, road rally. We're gonna walk you through it and just kind of show you how you can utilize them and what they do. So Peter shared a couple of examples with us already, and we'll just continue to kind of walk through them. Again, if you have any questions, just let us know as we go through this. So one of the things we look at is, why do you even wanna use the time allowances? They're really designed to handle delays and late arrival. So we've mentioned that the course is gonna be on public roads. So you know how traffic is on the weekend. Sometimes there's a, a big rush of traffic in a certain area. Maybe you are doing really well. You were behind some of the cars that you saw start in front of you, but now you're trapped. So don't worry about the delays and the late arrival. These are how we can help you to handle them. The only thing that they, the time allowances can't do though is it can't really connect for anything earlier than your original checkpoint time. But remember that there's no penalties if you wanna use a time allowance and they do help, which is why we're gonna take some time to walk through that. So how do you use the allowances? They have to be applied before you get to the checkpoint. So in the example that Peter was showing, you saw kind of the, the route instructions which told you to go to a stop sign and you saw that little photo there. So that is telling us that might be one of our checkpoints. So you have to apply the allowances before you get to the designated checkpoint. Now it does apply to all subsequent checkpoints until you hit that next restart. And there will be a few restart sections in the next rally. All you do is on the app itself, you're gonna press the TA plus. And if you look on the right side of the screen, there's a little green box and it has a TA minus and a TA plus on the right hand side. Just press that and that will help you to achieve the desired correction for your late arrival to the checkpoint time. 
Now, if you've kind of overcorrected, you can always press the TA minus. Okay, so this will help you in terms of you won't be as late to the next checkpoint after using the TA plus sign. So again, as we're looking at sort of the Richter wrap or the Richter app here, we're seeing some early uh, elements, we're seeing some late elements and that little pull out bar here. So this is just gonna really help you to sort of balance that overall. Now, again, I realize it sounds a little confusing, but let's spend a little more time walking through the increments. So the first TA plus that you're gonna hit will basically add 10 seconds. So that's a 10 second correction. The second time you hit the TA plus, it's a 20 second increment. So now you stand at a total correction of about 30 seconds. The third time you hit it, 30 seconds added, now we're bringing you up to about a minute overall here. The fourth TA, the next increment is 90 seconds added, and that's a two minute and 30 second correction. And again, this is something that's built into the app. So these are not some random things that we've selected, you know, for our group. This is kind of how the app was designed. Once you get to that fourth TA, the one minute increments go up to a maximum of about 19 minutes and 30 seconds. So, you know, you can go that high. Typically, given um, our course length and time, you probably won't need to go quite that high. Now, remember, we talked about resetting. So during the course, you're going to reset back to zero. When you get to that next course reset point, the time allowances will zero out, and then you can start over for the next leg. So that means you basically kind of wipe the slate clean. You're ready to start again with any new time allowances. Now, these increments can't be changed, and they do work the same in reverse with TA negative. So we're talking about TA plus kind of adding the times. Now we're going to talk about taking some of those times away. All right. So let's look at a kind of a real life situation here. If you know you're going to be late to a checkpoint, you you can see the checkpoint, but there is a lot of traffic and it is slow moving. You are not going to make that checkpoint on time. So before you arrive at the checkpoint, press the TA plus to accumulate the approximate amount of time that you think you're gonna be late. Typically, you know, about 10 seconds. Look at the time allowance on the right-hand side to just check and make sure. Is 10 seconds good or do I think I need to add a little bit more? So if your target time to get to a checkpoint is, you know, basically 12 minutes and 35 seconds out, what you're gonna to look to do is, excuse me, 12, 12, 12 o'clock and 12.35, let's do it. Let's do it clock style there. But due to traffic, you're going to arrive a little bit later than 12.35. You're actually going to be about eight seconds late. So remember, before you get to that checkpoint, just hit the TA plus on the app just one time. That's going to add 10 seconds. So now your new target time to arrive at that checkpoint is going to be 12 minute, or 12.35 and 10 seconds. And again, this will be something you'll be able to view. This is gonna help you to slow your average speed just a little bit. So now you're not arriving you know, quite as late here, which will help you out in the overall scoring. But remember that if you do need more than 10 seconds, if it looks like it's gonna take you quite a bit to get up to that checkpoint, you can press the TA plus in increments you know, up to the closest approximate time and then adjust your average speed accordingly. So it will actually work out for you. When we're talking about trying to take back some time, you know, I know one of the first ones when I was a navigator, I had a heavy hand on the button. And so I was adding a bunch of time that we didn't really need. So if you do end up arriving sooner than or on time compared to your, your last checkpoint that you were running late for, you can adjust your TA back down with the TA minus. And again, the, uh, the little top right of your screen here, you should see a little red call out box with a TA minus sign. So that's what you're going to hit. Remember, though, that you can't fix an earlier arrival than the designated checkpoint time on the route instructions. So it's not a shiny unicorn that will fix all of our racing ills, but it does help quite a bit. So real life example. So you took a 10 second TA plus at the last checkpoint, but now because of traffic actually working in your favor, you're going to be on time to the next checkpoint. So all you have to do is hit the TA minus one time. That's going to remove 10 seconds, and that'll bring your time allowance back to zero, zero, zero. That's really where you want to be. So we've kind of reset you a bit there. This will let you arrive at the checkpoint at the normal designated time based on the route instructions. The maximum amount of time that you can remove, again, remember, that's that 19 minutes and 30 second max. 
but you can't really go less than a zero cumulative allowance. All right, so Eric, I think we're expecting uh, some questions on that. Any questions so far? Sorry to bounce back over the app. Um, it looks like Rick is doing a great job of answering questions in the chat in real time. I don't think anything's pertinent to bring up, but I think uh, you're doing a pretty good job, Tracy, covering all the bases. All right. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate you and Eric handling that. All right, let's move on here. So scoring. We do have scoring in Road Rally. And as Peter covered earlier, you know we're looking at your arrival time to the designated checkpoints. So early arrivals and late arrivals to the checkpoints, they're scored in one second increments. You can get a maximum of 300 points, which are basically seconds per checkpoint. Early and late scores are added together, but they're not netted. So you, really the goal is from checkpoint to checkpoint, you really wanna arrive at the right time based on you know, how you're working your way through all the checkpoints. The cars with the lowest overall score in each class is the winner. Um, and again, that's kind of interesting because I know a lot of people try and, you know, they, there's a lot of conversation about why I need to get faster. I need to drive faster to that checkpoint. And it really isn't. You want to be on time to each checkpoint and that will really net you the lowest score. Early or late scores are calculated after the time allowances that are used. So you can take advantage of them. Again, you're not penalized at all for using the time allowances. You're also not penalized if you don't use the time allowances. They're simply a tool that will make it easier for you to accommodate for things, again, like traffic or, you know, long lines of unexpected uh, delays in getting from checkpoint to checkpoint. So definitely easy to use. All right. So it looks like we're at the end here. And again, we know that the checkpoints and the time allowances cause a lot of questions. So definitely feel free to send us your questions. Um, I will tell you, though, that hearing about the time allowances is a little bit harder than actually working with the time allowances. When you're in the car, it's it actually starts to make more sense. So don't worry if it still seems a little fuzzy to you now. We really want to make sure that you guys all have a really great time, that everyone stays safe. So appreciate you guys taking the time out on Friday night to join us. Also, please remember, we want to make sure that we're focused on safety. So keep the speeds in line with where they need to be for our specific roads as part of our racing area. And this is a rally uh, and a little bit of a competition, but really not a race, unfortunately. Those are for some other events down the road. Uh, make sure that you get your email with your car number. And again, we talked about getting the event directions to everyone via email. So that'll happen soon to both the navigator and driver. Again, if you, if you are one of those two roles and you're missing one or the other, we need to have you guys complete both of those. This will also include your completion of the speed waiver and making sure that the navigator, the driver has registered in RICTA with GPS. And if you have any questions, please reach out to ricksenior at gmail.com. And I know he'll be fielding a lot of questions between now and next week. So any other questions at this point, Eric? No, I think we're pretty good. I think Mark, uh, Mark DS that's in the chat has, a, I think it's a question, I'm not 100% sure, but I think we'll go ahead and talk to him offline about the actual yeah. anchor. Yeah, I'll say a couple of things I think um, we didn't mention that and just now that I'm watching this cold as well. Um, the car number and why that's important. One, you know, so at the start, uh, kind of that day of event, um, the event will start, I believe, at 9 a.m. So the first car um, will go out, car number one, um, will go out at 9 oh, at, at, uh, at nine o'clock if it's the start. Um, car, the next car will go out a minute later. So all of your checkpoints, basically you take your checkpoint time that is listed on the route instructions and add your car number to it. So if you are car number two and it says you're supposed to arrive at 9.10, you really have to arrive at 9.12. So every car thereafter has to do it because we can't write the route instructions with everybody's arrival time. So that arrival time is a, is a zero arrival time and you add your car number to it um, so that you know what your time is. So that's uh, definitely one thing. Um, and I don't know if it's kind of come up with the, the time allowances just to make sure. So if you add that time allowance and you go forward, when we say it counts to the next checkpoint, if you set it to be 10 seconds late, when you're looking at your route instructions, if you're still that 10 seconds late, it's going to carry every single one. So when you're looking at your time, um, you know, you could either plan to be 10 seconds late going forward or you're trying to get back on time. But just remember that thing is it's always there when you're looking at that piece of paper and the route instructions. You have to account then for your car number add plus the time allowance add or zero on it. 
Awesome. Good points, Peter. Anything else that you think we need to share with the rest of the, the novice drivers here? Not for me, if there aren't any questions. Nope. Um, We're good to go. Yeah, right. we will, like I said, we will have a uh, driver meeting. Um, it'll be short like this. Um, we won't be covering all of this material, but uh, also happy if you, you go back and rewatch or think about it and have questions. Um, come back again. We'll see you next Friday and then uh, Saturday morning for the rally. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And uh, like I put in the chat, and like we said at the very beginning, if you happen to join late, because it does happen, uh, we do appreciate you sticking through the live part of this. Feel free to rewind and uh, try to catch up on the parts you missed. Um, it will be available for replay immediately, so don't worry about that at all. Um, if you've already started watching, you can continue to watch without any problems. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to Rick Sr. at ricksenior at gmail.com. Uh, and we'll be uh, seeing you next Friday. Thanks, everybody, for joining. We really appreciate it. Have a great weekend.